looking for some healthy New Year's habits and how to organize your life in 2021 and just generally looking to start 2021 off on the right foot and be as organized and productive as possible, then you're in the right place. I'm Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video, we're going to talk about all of those habits and things that you can do now and at the beginning of 2021 to really make the most of your year. And the first thing that I want to talk about is making a plan and goal setting. There are a few things to remember when we're talking about goal setting. Think about it this way, a goal without a plan is just a dream. So to make those goals, you really want to first start off by reflecting on this past year. What went well? What didn't go well? Of course, 2020 has brought a lot of adversity for many people, and it wasn't necessarily the year that any of us expected, but still take the time to reflect on the positive things, what did go well and what didn't go well. And if you had goals in the past, did you meet them? Did you not? Were they not realistic? Or was there something else that prevented you from meeting those goals? Next, you want to make a vision for your future. What do you want? Don't set goals based on what other people are doing. Think about what truly fits you and your lifestyle and your goals in life and goals for 2021. Once you have those two things figured out, start brain brainstorming, really just jot down everything that comes to mind. I like to do just a complete brain dump on paper and then sort through all of those and pick my absolute favorites. Oftentimes some of the first things that we come up with don't end up being our best ideas. So just keep kind of spitballing with yourself and brainstorming. After that, you're going to want to set timeframes for your goals. A goal without a time frame is so difficult to monitor your achievements. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a goal that goes from January all the way to January of the next Next year, but even if it is, set quarterly milestones that you're hoping to meet. Every quarter, I really like to check in and make sure I'm 25% along with that goal because you've hit a quarter of the year. So you should be about 25% after the first quarter, 50%, then 75, and then at the end of the year, 100 if it's a year long goal. If it's a shorter goal, still check in on a weekly, monthly basis, whatever works best. Now that you have these goals and you have these time frames, make sure to write them down somewhere. If you don't write your goals, down, you're going to forget them and you won't have that satisfaction at the end of the year if you've really achieved them. The next habit to implement in 2021 is to create a calendaring system. Now, I don't care if this is on paper or if it's digital, you need to do whatever works best for you. Sometimes that might mean a combination. So I have a calendar online with work. Most people do. I also have recurring events that I have on my personal iCal that also sync to my phone. I can get reminders sent to me. That works really well for me for a Appointments, but I've kind of always been a paper planner type of girl. So I like having a paper planner as well. For me, it's a combo, but you need to figure out what works for you. It's going to be a game changer to have a grip on your calendar. Habit number three is to master the to-do list. Now there are so many different types of to-do lists. We have so many different categories in our lives, and that's why it's important to first start by categorizing your to-do list. So that could be work, personal, family, whatever you have in your life, and then think of it in different levels. So the first level is always going to be that running to-do list. And that's just brain dumping, long-term things, short-term things. And then I like to take from that running to-do list and pull things that need to get done on that month, that week. And then I plan every single day. I figure out what I want to get done that day. And I love to use my planner pads. I created these because this is the way that I like to structure my own day. So I come up with the things that I need to get done that day, my top three priorities, the rest of the to-do list items. Always a great idea to leave some space just in case things come up throughout the day. And then there's a space for things that you can hold off and you don't need to necessarily do today and you can do tomorrow and roll those over to the next day. This for me makes sure that I'm making the most out of each and every day. I have small attainable goals that I want to get done in a set time frame, which is one day. And then I also have that running list within each category so I can always go and grab more if I'm feeling over ambitious and I really want to accomplish a lot in one day, but I can also go back and just see everything from a broader scope. Number four is going to be to build a morning and an evening routine. And this is going to be a game changer if you haven't already implemented a morning and evening routine. So what I like to do is to think about the things that I'm already doing in the mornings and evenings from the different categories of my life and really create kind of a concrete list of those things that I have to do every single morning and every single evening. So when I say to pull from those different categories of your life, I like to think about 
what do I need to do for me? What are the personal things that I need to get done in the morning? What are the health and fitness related things? What are the things for my family? What are the things for work that I need to get done? And really just create a list of those few things. And if you're new to this, I suggest writing them down on a piece of paper and checking them off every morning and every evening until it kind of becomes second nature. I've shared some of my morning and evening routines that I like to do here before, but some of the things I like to do in the morning is I like to start with a nice healthy breakfast. Sometimes if I'm feeling really energetic, I will get in a light workout or go for a walk if the weather is nice out. I like to take care of a lot of my social media and the things for a sophisticated organization in the morning. I feel really productive then and I have a full-time job so that's the best time for me to get most of that done. And then I've also shared evening routines. I am a huge proponent of having a clean kitchen at night. Having a nightly tidy is so important to me so when I wake up in the morning my space is nice and fresh. So that's one thing that's always on my evening routine as well as a lot of self-care and family time type of tasks if you can even call them tasks but I like to take a bath or have a nice cup of tea and do something for me. So don't feel bad about putting something like that on your checklist or your morning or evening routine that's completely about you. That's part of what it's there for. Habit number five is to come up with a cleaning routine. And this is so vital to your productivity, your mental health, and freeing up time for other things that are important in your life, whether that's your family, your other 2021 goals and things that you want to accomplish. It really doesn't matter, but when your space is so messy that you can't take the time to spend it where you want and you're constantly cleaning, you have a problem. So don't freak out. Don't try and reinvent the wheel here. There are so many resources online where you can go to help you come up with a cleaning schedule. It'll help you decide what you need to be doing on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever it might be. If you really feel like you're a beginner, start Google searching. There are some resources on my website that you can check out. I have a few different videos on that. Just think of what works for you. And I know I've said that already in this video, but it's really important not to do something just because somebody else is doing it. A lot of people will recommend doing one load of laundry per day. So for me and my husband, and it's just the two of us. We don't genuinely create that much laundry to have to do one load of laundry every single day. And as somebody who has a nine to five job, I'm really busy during the week. I would prefer to have one or two dedicated laundry days where I'm doing multiple loads of laundry as opposed to having to do a single load of laundry every single day. That feels like dragging it out to me. That's an example of figuring out what works best for me and not necessarily doing what everyone else does. Think through everything that needs to get done in your house and the type of cadence based on what your life looks like and how you want to accomplish those things. Habit number six is to make an organizing and decluttering commitment. I'm asking a lot of you here but let's make 2021 our year where we are going to take back our homes, we're going to get organized, and you're going to declutter the things in your life that no longer serve you. There are two different categories, right? Organizing and decluttering. The decluttering part probably comes first. This doesn't have to be done in one day. It doesn't have to be done in one month. You can kind of take one room at a time and break it up into small chunks if that's what works best for you and start with your dresser. If you wanna do one drawer a day, do one drawer a day and start by decluttering there. If you like my laundry situation, would prefer to do more at once and you don't wanna drag it out, just sit down and knock out your entire dresser, go to your closet next and just keep going. But make a commitment to go through your home in 2021. Hit every space, no matter how long it takes you, you have the whole year and make a commitment to declutter the things that you don't need. Of course, decluttering and organizing go hand in hand. So you're gonna to wanna to be implementing systems and organizing things as you're decluttering, but also making a commitment not to bring more things into your space unless you truly need them. And this is gonna be so much easier if you're taking this decluttering task really seriously because I know the feeling of clothing in my closet that I've only worn a couple of times and then knowing it's time to declutter it. I hate that feeling of feeling like I've wasted my money. So when I go out and buy something, I think in my head, is this something that I'm going to end up decluttering in just a couple of months and I've wasted my money on it and I'm never actually going to wear it. So think through those questions as you're bringing things into your 
your home because you know that you're not gonna like the feeling of getting rid of something that you didn't get your money's worth. Now my last and final habit for you is to take care of yourself. It can be so easy to overlook ourselves when we have our jobs and our families and our homes to take care of, but it is so important to remember that you are important and you can't take care of the other habits and the other things on your to-do list if you aren't taking care of you. Whatever you do in 2021, don't forget about you. And with that, I hope that you guys have a wonderful New Year's and you have the 2021 that you plan and hope and dream of. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I will see you guys later.